and absolutely flushes the break. Isn't it amazing because he he seems to have taken a bit off of that from his last match even and uh, he's probably only hitting that at 50% but because he knows how the table's reacting he's been so consistent with his break and this time straight up straight up down the middle of the table and um, yeah both both sets look okay yellow's probably the more favorable the only uh, issue with the yellows is the black where he needs to get to I think the thing that's been amazing watching Mark and I've commented on every match he's had so far is that the, the natural instincts of the pool player the pattern seeing the problem ball and okay we've seen him gone wrong go wrong straight away here but he's he's kind of seen the game as good as it or very very good very very well isn't he he's, he's see, it's not like we've seen because he hasn't really played I know he won the pairs with Gareth but he hasn't really played you know for 16 years but he's seeing it incredibly well well yeah and you look at the other snooker players that have that have come across and played in some of the events and one that sticks to mind for me is Tom Ford absolutely amazing talent great snooker player but with Mark he's very much a more uh, measured player and I think that shows in his snooker and I think he's he's basically just picked up from where he left off um, many years ago when he was playing pool at a very high level um, and I think it, it all boils down to his cue ball control it's been phenomenal so far yeah, and when he's just a roll or two off, he comes up with the big pots when he needs to as well. Yeah, because the, the big shots for him, uh, un unlike some of the other players, yeah. they're just blacks off the spot for him. <laughs> you know? They're hanging, yeah, no, absolutely. Well, he has faltered with his first opportunity, but hasn't left anything on for John and Red. So we're into a tactical exchange here in the opening frame. Yeah, nice there from John. He knew he couldn't, there was no point in chasing that. So just playing the right shot, keeping the pressure on Mark interesting to see what what Mark um, knows I mean I'm sure he's very tact tactically aware no stone will have been left unturned even though uh, he sort of mentioned that he's just coming in and free running which he is but I'm sure he'll know what to do in these such situations very very important this first frame because if John can get off to a good start it's his break next of course Yeah, we've not really seen anybody really get ahead of Mark and, and put him under it. He's always sort of held the, the front foot, really. Yeah, you're right. He's not. I don't think he's ever been behind in any match so far. I think he was level with Gareth, obviously, but um, Gareth went in off his break, I think, straight after that. So, yeah, it'd be good to see how he responds if he does go a few behind and if the you know the match clock has any impact at all. Does the yellow squeeze past? Looks like it. Mark believes it does. Look at how attacking he is already trying to... He was trying, I think, to get into those reds and yellow. Nearly landed perfectly. He did. One roll less and he's got the gap and everything can open up. But it's just tracked too far. wonder if he can play he can get onto the yellow that's closest to the bottom right hand pocket and pot it develop the the reds and black and stay on his last yellow wonder if that's an option don't know if he's got enough of a gap I think he's played for it and that tells me that he probably can yeah, so he he's going to need a little bit of luck on this shot Simon hasn't got it okay he's on the next ball but the eight ball has not opened up yeah he's gonna have to leave a double isn't he just wants to uh, sort of drag this in with a bit of left hand side try and get straight as he can on the black oh. I won't be happy with that one okay he may have missed a double but don't miss the yellow although it wasn't exactly hanging over the pocket very delicate shot his chance goes it's not that easy though here for John to make the counter clearance because of where the red and eight ball are I think we'll see him just drop this one in and then uh, play the snooker behind the eight ball and then in doing so he's going to be developing his most awkward red here wants to get this tight if he can 
Yeah, very nice. Very nice. This will take some getting out of. May not be able to. Yeah, if he, uh, if he can see the very uh, nearest part of the bottom cushion next to the pocket, he may have an angle, but even then it's going to be very difficult on these slidey cushions. Great effort. Some effort. Yeah, great effort. He knew that if he played it hard, it was going to check off the second cushion, straighten up the white, but unfortunately it was too much. You see it again. Off the first cushion, second, and then checks off the third one. Just a little bit too hard. Checked a huge amount as well. And now John can go about his finish. Not the cannon he really wanted, but he's okay. Yeah, and in these situations, it's not. It's probably good to remind yourself that the table is playing quite generous because of the heat and because of the, the new new cloth. So some of the shots that perhaps you would think, oh, this is a bit awkward, actually you can go for them with freedom, but it looks like John's going to play another snooker. Don't blame him there, it's the first frame. Yeah, and just going back to your previous point, when you know that, you can, if you float in a minute pocket weight, it looks, you, you can almost be playing it in that way. Absolutely. Um, and then it looks bad because you, it looks like, oh, you, you know, they slid in from there, but actually you know that's a, you know. You, you're playing to the, yeah, yeah, you're playing to the table, exactly right. And, um, you know, it's, it's good because if you are slightly on the wrong side of a ball, for example, and you need better position, you can manipulate it just because you know the, the pockets are playing slightly more generous. Yeah. Also, you kind of you grow up with the mindset of you can't hit the near jaw when you're playing them down the cushion, but they actually slide in off the near jaw and they don't really slide in off the far jaw, so you tend to hint that way as well. Yeah, your natural instinct is you have to almost change your mindset, don't yeah. you, I think? Right, now these are exactly where John wants them. Yeah. Shouldn't need any more snookers. Time to run through this counter clearance. said a few times on commentary since we've seen John as an ultimate ball pro you know he, he's a very he keeps it he likes his pace around the table he's, he's not slow but he he's never quick if that makes any sense and you know in this match clock era especially on these match tables it, it's an amazing number of times his matches were a lot closer to the clock being put being into play even if it was a high quality because of the time he likes to take yeah no, that's a good point and it's whether it it's something he wants to look at that when they are there just flow through them yeah and especially in matches where it does come down to the wire a little bit more um, I think in this situation when you've got your 30 seconds he can look at everything look at every option and make sure he's happy but you know if it does go five each six each that's when it could catch him out I think another one of these players though that um, when you watch him you never feel like he's under any sort of pressure at all and he just plays as if he's down the club a little bit like Tom Cousins in a way yeah very sort of you know just slowly goes around the table and yeah just looks very relaxed on every shot yeah outwardly gives off a great temperament doesn't he like yeah. he doesn't care at all and nothing will phase him And he does get the opening frame on the board. That one used nearly nine minutes. How far down do they play to tonight? Is it the semi-finals? The, the tournament's completed tonight. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, exactly right. So, um, be a slightly different feeling for Mark having to go back to back if he does keep winning. For someone like John, obviously, he's used to it. So, that might have an impact, as you, as you point out. What a break, though. Yellows definitely look to be the balls for John here. He's just got one awkward one, which I think he can develop off his first shot. One of the few players I've seen come, uh, cut breaking all weekend long here on the main table. Majority going for the front ball. Yeah, John, one of the few that's able to get maximum power through the, the cut, cut break. Lovely shot, straight away attacking his awkward yellow. He would rather not have stuck on the side cushion. I think he's actually happier that the yellow pulled up over the pocket because if it hasn't, then he may not be able to avoid the 
the yellow and red together. Yeah, he's just looking at that now, as, as you rightly say. So he's probably going to have to either play this with a bit of side or get into digging down on the white so that he misses that yellow. But he'll be very conscious this is a, a very big moment already in this match. He wants to ask the question of Mark. I don't think that's how he played it. Slight raise of the hand. I'm not sure if he was acknowledging that or it's he's just okay with where it is. He Could can work from here, though. Yeah, couldn't have worked out much better for him. If he's got an angle on the uh, yellow that he's closest to, then he can play that in the middle. If not, he can just stun up for that next shot, which I think he's going to choose to, or he's going to top it through. No, he's just going to roll it in. That's okay, because he trusts his ability. He's got a straight yellow now, so it should be 2-0 if he uh, can get these last three yellows. Number one right now, Daniel Randall. She'll be in, la in action later on today. Did she win the last event? She won the first event. Won the first. And she's just marginally uh, holding the number one spot. But it's going to be very tight all year long. So because of his snooker commitments, we may not get to see him a huge amount of times, but we need to embrace it when we do. Absolutely. What's great as well is he gives the game complete respect, you know, and the players as well. And uh, he's got time for everybody, which I think is nice. Yeah, he's been all over the place watching other matches and meeting, talking to lots of different people throughout the week. It's been great to see. Doesn't seem to be having uh, the same run of, of breaks, of, unfortunately, in this match so far. A good thing from his point of view is that these haven't come out easy for John. There's a lot of work to do. Yeah, a couple of problems, but sort of layout that is very, very tricky and then players like John and a lot of the top players can kind of make it look quite simple. Well, he's done that, hasn't he? In that first shot, he's got on his most awkward yellow straight away. And uh, once he pots this, everything else has it has its own pocket. So really well executed first shot from John. And uh, now he's, he's OK. This one goes up to the top left. And then he'll probably want to, depending on where he wants to be, he'll probably take the uh, yellow bottom right. come back up the table for his last three three yellows. You sense that this is the only shot that could really get, go wrong, maybe getting on the eight ball nicely, but if this lands, it should be plain sailing for him. Yeah, and if he can, he'll want to screw this directly back up the table, not have to use any cushions, which makes it a bit easier for him positional, positional wise. And that looks absolutely perfect. What a great shot. Ball in hand, perfect, isn't it? Yeah, and so hard to decelerate on those, because you know how fast the the cloth is playing, so timed and cued that perfectly. Could take the option to take the yellow off the red and open up the left centre pocket, but the eight ball then isn't necessarily that easy to get on into that pocket, certainly not nicely. Yeah, so I think if he's perfect on this yellow to play that shot, we can just stun the white, then he might do that, as you, as you say. So it opens up another pocket for the eight ball, and he's, he's done exactly what you said, so. And careful not to overhit it so he blocked off the bottom left hand corner just yeah. because it depends on what angle he gets on the last yellow he'll then have op options I still think bottom left is the most likely yeah absolutely less that can go wrong if he does it that way yeah that's nice so he can come can come off two cushions and, and play Simon shot or he can play it with drag and left hand side depends how he feels 
some players like to punch the balls in, some players like to drift them in, float them in as it were. Also wondering what the natural is, because if the natural's going towards the red in the middle of the table, then the middle becomes a good option. Yeah, definitely. He plays the two cushions and plays it absolutely pinpoint perfect. Yeah, acknowledged by Mark. What a start from John. Yeah, very good. That first frame was so pivotal, but he's backed it up with a couple of really good clearances off the break. What a match that's going to prove to be because Steve Dempsey is, is playing really well and Waddingham just looks incredible at the moment. Two of the players of the year, really. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. Stevie's already made three finals. Craig's already won a title. And no surprise, I think, that um, I think it was before the last man standing, the Champions League, which Craig won. He, he mentioned in uh, his interview that he'd been putting some work in. And uh, when someone as talented as Craig starts putting the work yeah. in, you, you know you're in trouble. So, Which is rare because he doesn't normally, he's not a big practicer. Yeah, he's very laid back, isn't he? And play, says he plays the old frame of snooker here and there. But um, whatever he's been doing, it's definitely working. OK, dry break means Mark Selby is at the table. But this is a, a very testing layout. Yeah, he's got to go, you would have thought yellows, but um, he's got two pretty awkward, awkwardly positioned yellows. First one is next to the three reds in the middle. Does that go? Well, just. He's made it go. Just. The red. Great shot. There's the first awkward one gone. He's got another one that he's uh, looking at now, which is next to the two reds at the bottom left. Can he screw into that? What a shot. Beautiful. And the reason you're saying yellow's not, not uh, reds was because at the back end, the one on the right-hand side connects to the one by the reds, and that connects to the eight ball. So the last three, if he can get anywhere near straight on the one on the cushion, takes care of itself. Yeah, exactly. And that's where someone like Mark is so good because his, his positional play is excellent. Uh, as proven in those those first two shots and certainly the second one that he played. He can literally put it on a, a penny piece where he wants it to go. Hit a lovely gap there. Wanted to get this one by the middle out of the way. It doesn't fit the back end. So Key shot now. Needs to travel. Yeah, needs, needs to, to travel. travel. Didn't really get through that white there, Simon. I th maybe a slight bit of deceleration. I think the yellow boat goes to both pockets, so I think he's okay. I think he would have preferred to take it top left because it you've got more margin to get on the eight ball, but I think it does go top right. This is very thin. Oh, it's right, twice across the table, and he lands pretty good better than that he looks, lands very good I think you're right though it did go to the uh, bottom right but clearly positional wise for the eight ball he, he thought that it was worth the risk of coming twice across and as you say what a great shot good response this from Mark I like what Tom Cousins said um, after he beat Shane Thompson in one of the last events he was 4-1 down, I believe. I don't know if it was you or Simon. Uh, Jambo asked him a question of, you know, what are you thinking when you're 3-0 down, 4-0 down, 4-1 down, etc. And his response, well, look, it's only one dry break. Yeah. And I think that's the the way to, the best way to think, you know. Now Mark's going to break. It could be 3-2 within a couple of minutes and then potentially you're right back in the game. Before he breaks off every break, in his mind, he envisages himself getting a ball. So he... He actually believes he's going to make a ball, and I think that's so important. Yeah. You know, I'm on my break thinking I'm definitely not going to get yeah, a you ball. Think you're, you're hoping, not, not yeah. you know, not expecting. Yeah. So, and it does boil down to mindset, as most of these uh, high-level Q sports do, doesn't it? So, um, maybe there's something in that. Mark has made a ball. Definitely seemed to hit those a bit harder this time than his last couple. Nearly a great layout, although. If this yellow goes, it is actually a very, very good layout. For a second, I thought he didn't have much option here. But oh, yeah, you were right. It's perfect now, isn't it? Yeah. I don't want to put the commentator's curse on Mark, but I think um, he's good here. It's all about just making sure he gets in the right positions with the white ball. 
Two yellows on the uh, bottom right hand side of the table. They may be a plant, so we can play on that straight away. As long as the yellow doesn't go towards that red, he's fine. It looks like it might be just offset. Yeah, in that case, he might play this one first on the left-hand side so that he can get straight behind it. He's a bit high where he is at the moment. So touch aside. Ah, he's gone up for it instead. That's okay. As long as he's gone high enough, I'm not sure. It looks tight. So. Yeah, it does. He wants to be on the one nearest the pocket rather than having to play the plant. John can't watch or doesn't want to watch or he's more interested in something else anyway let's put it that way well, there's two other games going on so he's uh, so now he has to play the plant yeah and as you rightly said earlier he was could have gone wrong but he's played that really well see the ball that went in the pocket went right in the side of the pocket if he makes that centre pocket he knows he's putting the, the yellow in trouble so that was actually a much better shot than it looked he was trying to avoid that at all costs yeah he used his knowledge of the table didn't he there and look at that for a positional shot He's just touched that and it's come back beautifully. Very, very good. 3-0 down. Dry break. 3-2. John was making sure that he was going to go dry for the second time in a row there. So absolutely wellied that break and uh, looks to have come out really nice on yellows, I think. to mention on uh, Eddie Barker nice to see him having a run so far this weekend yeah it is great to see him back yeah I think he had a good win against Sean Storey in the last round so must be playing very well and Batman has to beat the Joker so <laughs> <I mean laughs> exactly there's been plenty of uh, stories written about that <laughs> who was um, who was your tip for the I know. I think you mentioned it in your podcast, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Well, we have two. Picks was it Waddingham? But he, it got stolen, or? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so I had. Um, in the end, I had Phil Harrison, and that, that's not not gone um, particularly well. Well, I have got Sean Chipperfield still battling, so uh, we get two picks because uh, there is two tournaments. Well, if there's anyone that you would think is going to do well, it would be Sean Chipperfield on, on his previous uh, runs. You feel the reason I picked him is you feel he's the next kind of the next guy up that hasn't yet won an individual title in terms of he's knocked on the door pretty hard you yeah. know number of semi-finals yet to make that final individually yeah um, but obviously former world champion you know is elite level game yeah a little bit like Chris Melling in terms of style when he's on it you can just blow anybody away yeah and very very quickly yeah John in great shape here to get the break clearance Yeah, Mark's uh, asked the question of John, and he looks like he's responding. As so we thought we probably would, he's been very composed, very measured throughout this match so far. Don't expect that to change. Sometimes the uh, the layout of the balls after each break does dictate how the match is, is going to go. We haven't really seen uh, anything too scrappy so far. It's been pretty free-flowing. Yeah, just that opening frame, wasn't it? That at the time felt pivotal, and it, it still feels that way. Yeah. John would have wanted to be a bit further over so he could just screw this back onto the side cushion, but he's a great potter, so he can probably get there anyway. Yeah, that's nice. Again, tap of the table from Mark. Acknowledging... How well John is playing. Good to see. Yeah, another one on the board for John McAllister. Opens up a two-frame lead again.
Cue ball's running a little bit loose there, but it doesn't go in that top right-hand corner, and the split's now a decent one. Yeah, you're right, it was tracking, wasn't it? But uh, just got to the side cushion in time. Especially with the two other balls chasing it, you just felt like bad things were going to happen there. Yeah, Red was very close to knocking it in, wasn't it? But uh, Red's... Oh, I, I, I don't know, maybe yellows could be the balls here. If he can cut this one back in the right middle, but uh, looks like he's going reds. I think if he had a better starter, then I like yellows, but I don't think he has the starter he wants. The reason that reds are slightly trickier is just the eight ball, but he does have the one at the bottom right, which he can use to get on the eight ball. Yeah, we'll just use the yellow here that he's closest to to hold. That's nice. You can come use the red in the middle, next to the middle pocket to, to transition up the table and then back down for the last red and black. Imagine he'll be taking the eight ball into the left middle, potentially. So we just want to mind his work now on where he positions the white ball. He's pointing his cue at where he wants to be. This is about judging the pace, which Mark's incredibly good at. Important shot though now, 4-2. Wants to get this right. Now, will he use the yellow that's just off the cushion to hold the white? He did, but he just he just skimmed it slightly on the wrong side, so this has become a slight test now into the middle pocket. Never in doubt. Yeah, drops it in, calm as you like. Chasing each other into the pocket there. The cut break does seem to be working really well for John. Work to do though in this clearance. First, in first glance I would say reds are probably the Better option. Got a tricky red, obviously, next to the two yellows down by the spot in the centre of the table. It'll need to get developed somehow. Could have gone wrong. But he's just able to see enough of the cue ball here, I think, to be able to cue it properly. It's that age old thing of uh, getting cannoning to your awkward ball as early as you possibly can, if you can. And uh, I think now is the time. John's got the perfect angle on this. Red into the bottom, bottom hand left and pop, bot left, bottom left pocket. It's I hot. Say. We get it is. <laughs> it's hot. Even in here, it's hot. But yeah, just okay though. That red is still very, very awkward. I'd love that to come down one more half a turn and then it'd be on it. It does go into the bottom right hand corner. There's not much room to land on it, but John's certainly capable of getting there. Yeah, I think if it was me, I'd be dropping this red into the right hand middle and leaving myself uh, the red that he's closest, the red that he will be closest to, just to roll through if he can. He's gone. I think he's pretty straight now, so he may have to play the other one. I mean, it does go to the bottom left, but 
it's the yellow's guarding it. You can't really get on it unless you get very, very thin on it. So. Doesn't look like he's got any sort of angle to get across now. Surely he has to go up the table first and then get the angle. Yeah. Oh, he's tried to get there off the top one. And he's overhit it significantly. I wasn't sure about... I mean, it's, it's so easy to sit in a commentary box and, and say in hindsight, but the reason I didn't like that option was simply because if he lands on it but not with an angle, then the, the next red becomes very difficult well, as well. Yeah, and for me, that was the reason I said he should have tried to get on that one first, because even if he gets on this red, he's still got to get the right angle to be able to play on the next one. So, yeah, I agree there. Could this be the turning point? You'd say that's the first real mistake that John McAllis has made in the match, and we are being critical there because it wasn't an easy ball to deal with, and he, he's tried a couple of times and it's not popped out for him. These, ha these things happen. But he turns the table over for Mark. Chance to tie the scores up. Yeah, not all that much for Mark to do. This first shot is probably the most important. He wants to get on the, uh, get to the centre of the table, which he's done there. And now he can just drop down for the, the remaining yellows. So, very nice shot from Mark. from Mark, obviously, who we've all been focusing on the last couple of days. Simon, is there anybody else that you've uh, watched that you thought, wow, he looks, or she, you know, they, they look really good? Um, yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's been very impressive to see everybody playing, but we focus mainly on the main table. And I think we're, we're actually in a position where, obviously, a lot of attention on Mark Selby, and quite rightly. Um, but there are a few players maybe floating a little bit more under the radar. Um, Craig Waddingham been very impressive so uh, so far. You know, and he's kind of floating a little bit more under the radar because we've not seen him on the main table. And huge moment for the young man, though, one that he'll take away and learn from and improve. And you know, huge performance and shows he can beat anybody in the world. And yeah. that's you know, almost trying to tell yourself that is quite a big thing. Oh, beautiful break, beautiful split. I think that's flying, flying a little bit under the radar that we haven't seen a huge amount of this weekend here on the main tables. Jack Whelan, spoken to him a couple of times. He, he knows he's playing very well. Yeah, he's had some uh, pretty uh, uneventful wins, hasn't he? They've been um, sort of seven nils and seven ones. So next up for him, Jack. Uh, next up for Jack Whelan is Sean Chipperfield. We'll see that on table two or three. I'm not sure which table it's going to go on to yet, but table two or three. And that could be a final in anyone's book, so... Absolutely. It's come out well for him. Still not ideal yet to make it really simple. They all go... It's so easy to look at the table and well, every red goes, so it's, he's going to get out, but do they connect? And you've got to make it work. Yeah, I think that's the key thing with eight ball pull. It's about the patterns and getting the white ball in the right places at the right times to make it as easy as you possibly can. We've seen so many people, myself included, as soon as you go out of position, you are chasing the finish, and that's where it goes wrong. But um, Mark's really not been in that position too much so far. Yeah, it's why it always amazes me when I'm talking to different people about, about the game and they're saying, well, you know, best players always seem to get better layouts than I get. Well, yes, because it's easy for them because they make it easy. 
every yeah. ball having a pocket and you know having a way of being potted is is okay but can you connect the dots and make it work the best can and make it look simple yeah prime example is phil harrison when yeah. he's playing well he uh, he does exactly that the white ball is on a, a string Now then, I think he's fine. He's okay. Yeah, I think so. He didn't look. I mean, he could have put a little trace on that just to make sure he, he beat the eight ball, but confident enough to get it right, and he did. Yeah, never in doubt. And from a few behind, Mark Selby is now going to take the lead with 16 minutes left. Ball's flying in everywhere. Even though reds look very look like an easy finish it's slightly awkward in terms of the layout so John may elect to go yellows here just uh, the way he sees it yeah he's decided there that easier color set I think the crucial part to this pattern is going to be the yellow at the top left and then coming back down the table potentially. May even have to leave that one till last, so we'll, we'll wait and see. Can't afford any more mistakes now. Coming to the back end of the match. Desperate to keep the pressure on Mark. Didn't really want that one to go in. It would have caused him a little bit of a headache. But yeah, actually that one staying over the hole has helped him. Could choose to play yellow into the middle here and then go for his uh, yellow at the top left if he wants to. I think he's tried to do that, but he's not come far enough, I don't think. And that changes things. Yeah, that's slightly careless there from John. He still should be okay because he can play this one at the bottom right-hand pocket and get to the same area to play the same shot. It just means that he hasn't got the comfort of being able to play the plant knowing that he's, he can't fail to pot it. Two cushions. No. John decided to come straight back up and try and play both of them to the same pocket back to back that was a very difficult shot he was attempting there yeah out of the two players it seems like John is the one that slightly faltered in uh, a couple of his clearances and what can he pull out from this position this is massive chance goes back to back chances have gone for John McAllister that's why Mark is on a little run of frames here yeah he started off this match like a machine like he wasn't going to miss anything but uh, Mark stayed with him as you would expect only difference uh, in this match is the couple of mistakes that John's made from 4-2 up and as the match has gone on Mark Selby's break has improved and uh, he hasn't looked like making any errors at all for a change <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah this uh, 
be marked break next, I believe. So yeah, there's a definitely a, a chance. We've said this a few times, but there's a chance that John's played his last match, uh, last shot in the match. In the way that Mark's playing at the moment, if he makes a ball off his next break, assuming he gets out here, it could be the end. Yeah, and it will just boil down to two errors from John in the whole match, and it's cost. It could cost him the match seven four. Shows so the standard you've got to be playing at to stick with Mark Selby. That's not the best shot he's ever played. Just about far enough. And it flies though. One frame away now for Mark. 3-0 down he was at one point. Hits them well, but looks like it's going to be the dry break. Yeah, this is the chance that John would have wanted. And Reds... Uh, well, yeah, I would have said Reds are probably the balls here because they all go. They all have a pocket. And he can play the one up the top right first. It's a straight pot. And then work his way down, I believe, if he can get on the one in the middle. In if he's straight on this, he can just push through and have a choice of three reds. If he is straight on, on this, then he's in, in great shape because they sort of are, the connections are perfect, aren't they? Yeah, they are. So the beauty of eight ball Paul, you just never know. You are never safe in this uh, in this game. Mark has hit that break just as well as he's hit the others. Controlled the white ball nicely, but didn't get a ball. Yeah, not to mention that, but the layout's quite nice for John as well. It could have gone very awkward. So sometimes it really is in the lap of the gods. the red above the yellow in the middle of the table goes to the bottom right which is why he's gone this way around I thought he was going to go the other way around for the the one he's just played would connect to the red into the right centre but it goes down the table that's why he's gone this way we've moved into the 15 seconds a shot part of the match so the final 10 minutes so John does need to move a little bit quicker around the table just to not allow that clock to become a factor yeah he's just if he's straight on this, then he's fine. He can he can run through, but I think he's going to try and stun it in. Ideally, that's what he wants to do and come down. Oh, dear. He's going to be so frustrated because he was in perfect position again in this frame and it's suddenly becoming very awkward. I think it's been the culmination of the last two chances that he's missed. has just slightly dented his confidence, Simon. Yeah, and he's gone for the... Very, very tough plant there. He could have clipped that back, but he was going nowhere with the cue ball, so goes for the plant. But yeah, it's three straight chances of this sort of level that he's missed on the bounce. Yeah. Now they weren't absolutely easy, but they were they were sort of clearances that we we've kind of become accustomed to see John make fairly comfortably. Yeah, and no matter how mentally strong you are, you know, he's probably forgiven himself for the first mistake, but then the second one. Uh, it sort of gets on top of you no matter how strong you are mentally and I think that's just dented his confidence slightly especially as Mark has just not let up you know every mistake John's made has been magnified by Mark Selby yeah Mark made his own error in the opening frame but you know similar sort of tricky-ish clearance but one you only because of the level they play at you almost expect them to get but it wasn't that easy yeah but other than that he's been flawless in this match takes its toll really is so impressive the pool that he's playing everything is so measured so controlled it's a joy to watch a couple of balls away now
plays the short position, plays it beautifully. And this eight ball for another victory for Mark Selby. And in it goes, brilliant performance from him, turning around a 3-0 and 4-2 deficit. And he books his place in the quarterfinals.